Yang. I am good. How are you doing? I'm great, Mary. It's been a while since we recorded a pod. I'm so excited to be back. Me What too. have you been up to? Me too. So, so excited. Well, I've been up to quite a few things. First of all, I changed jobs. So I am now a product manager at Meta. I am working on the Metaverse and it's just really, really exciting. That's the first thing I did. The second thing I did is I actually had a little baby, um, which is now she's four months wow. old. Wow. <laughs> really congratulations on such big milestones, baby and a new job. By the way, even I moved jobs. I am now, uh, I left Facebook or Meta. So we just uh, passed by each other. And now I'm a senior director of product here at uh, a startup called Turing.com. So, wow. so excited. Uh, both of us in new jobs and new life. Uh, wh- what have you been up to besides the new job and the baby? What's going on? Well, congratulations, I have to say. Thank we you. need to do a podcast about, you know, job hunting and navigating this this space. <laughs> well, Good other idea. than I'll do that. <laughs> other than job hunting, actually, I am obsessed with this new album. It's by Harry Styles. It's called Harry's House. I don't know if you know Harry Styles. He's literally mm-hmm. one of the best. I just love him. He's really, really great. Um, and I was mm. on Spotify listening to this album right before I dialed in here. And I really want to see him live. So I want to find dates and figure out when he's touring, if he's touring and purchase tickets because I need to see him live. Interesting, Merle. Such timely, such a timely uh, request from you. Spotify just recently announced a brand new experience to discover concerts and book tickets. It was there earlier, but they have gone deeper to improve the experience significantly. Wow. What if we talk about that today and really break it down for our users? I think this is a fantastic thing and very, very timely, as you say, because I need to use it like right now. <laughs> Love it. Hi, everyone. This is Mayank. And this is Marilee. And welcome to Product Breakdown. This is a fantastic podcast. We love doing it. We essentially look at the news and we take a product or something that was announced that's very interesting from a product perspective and we break its strategy down. So join us today as we talk about Spotify and being able to purchase gig tickets through that platform. Wow, love it, love it, Merle. Let's let's go straight into it. Uh, Merle, first things first, what is this product? And really, what does it mean to the user? Tell us more. Well, historically, and Spotify, as we all know it until yesterday, really, we would go on Spotify, we would listen to our favorite band, artist, mm-hmm. and so on. But then when it came to actually being able to see them live at some concert, we needed to go off platform. We needed right. to go on Google and search for tour dates, locations, and purchase tickets on different companies like Ticketmaster, StubHub, and so on. But now with this announcement, which is really amazing, not only can we discover gigs and concerts that will be of interest to us, we can also book them. So this is a double fold impactful new product for the users. And in all honestly, now that we're talking about it, it makes total sense that Spotify would do something like that. What do you think of it? No, I think it's a fantastic concept like i i love my bands when i follow them and i follow them i listen to the music yes uh, i was using some other platforms to sort of track their concerts and tour dates and then take next step to find which website to use to book the tickets but this is exciting it's, it's just blending into my experience solving exactly the problem that me as a fan would have so totally love it yeah, I think this is this is really great. And it is going to be a game changer, especially for the other companies as well, like, Keaton, like Ticketmaster and so on. So let's dive into this a bit more. What is the product strategy? And I know whenever I talk about product strategy, my young is who comes to mind because this is this is your you're perfect for this. So, yeah, talk to me um, about your perspective here. Yeah, I think I'll not react to just this specific angle of Spotify. I think let me let us try to break down what is the growth strategy they're looking at, what is the strategy they're looking at, and then figure out how does this fit in the puzzle. So if you look at this specific move, it fits in very well with the overall broader Spotify growth strategy. If you think about Spotify where it is today, well, they did a great job in expanding and coming up with a product that was collating all the music that you had into one platform and then bringing people towards it. So they have done a solid job to build that ecosystem of music content from artists and bring people together. And they expanded to many geographies. The question was, how will they grow next? 
when you think about this question of growth there are three big things that come to you come to your mind as a strategy number one is you go deeper in what you're doing already which means whatever is working for you you create more depth in it so let's say you add more content you use that to acquire more users you expand into new geographies you acquire new users and spotify will do that i think there's no question about that so go deeper into music from content and new markets perspective and, solid first strategy no problem there right building on your yeah. strengths really and playing your strength of course which is currently let's say it's music podcast is coming i know that but let's say music is the first one second very clear strategy for growth is look for complementary verticals when you think about um, any such product like spotify music is working what's the next complementary vertical audio is the format podcast is the next vertical you can think about so concert fit really well into that construct of new complementary verticals your strength was music artists were the anchor pulling people together towards the music concert was the next thing people are looking for as fans after listening to music to go to is this the biggest thing we'll talk more about that in a bit but that's the next construct first is go deep in what you're doing slash music for spotify second is look for new complementary verticals could be podcast concerts or videos for spotify and the third thing is which is completely radical i mean again i'm just giving you the construct for strategy of growth enter a completely new industry think of amazon amazon was doing e-commerce suddenly they were doing also amazon prime uh for video now that's only amazon can pull that thing uh which is completely crazy which you can do something completely orthogonal to what you're doing so spotify has picked what this strength is and then use that to come up with the next complementary vertical so what the strength is the artist base they have people are fans of these artists they connect with it and spotify picked on that specific connection and expanded into it which was videos from the same content doing really well we are seeing some good traction there podcast they've invested billions of dollars into spotify podcast expanding significantly fast the next logical thing was concert the physical element of these fans with interact uh, with the, of these artists with interact with their fans so from that perspective the complementary vertical strategy is what spotify is anchoring on and building towards it by expanding into new use cases so that's the angle from a product strategy perspective i love it and it's worth it saying here that it's kind of a safe experiment if you will because if something goes wrong spotify is still going to be spotify so it's not like it's um, this new bed is going to destroy them in any way so i think that's a solid um strategy so let me ask you this we talked about it we said that these are more about actual physical presence so you go there you, you purchase your ticket you go to your concert um let's take the one step further and you know how i'm very passionate about the metaverse and the virtual yeah. world i can imagine spotify being a solid platform for virtual conferences and virtual concerts as well so what would you say about a virtual side of concerts and purchasing tickets and accessing it through spotify see you're making a very good point you're saying well there is something beyond complementary verticals beyond new industry beyond going deep and which is what i would call it new formats yeah mm-hmm. that's a very very valid point maybe the video and podcast can also fall in the same fourth category yeah, of sure. new formats it is super important yes uh, everybody will be trying new formats people who are doing video will go towards audio and a third dimension could be could be virtual people who are doing audio like spotify mm-hmm. would go towards video and the third dimension called virtual absolutely i think you are now going to the next question of ours which is what is the future uh, and i believe yes why not uh, definitely you again going back to the construct of what the strengths are the strengths are the fan base on their platform and the artist in the platform that's the biggest strength there's a connection between them how can you use the connection to create more value new formats to for them to interact with each other i completely believe that this can happen and i'm sure they're investing it already in some form or the other if you don't know that we'll have that coming out very soon so yes it's possible but any more uh, mary when you say meta uh, sort of virtual uh, virtual experience for spotify artists and fan what do you have in mind tell us more about a little bit more like visual uh, let us visualize that a little bit more Yes, of course. So I mentioned that I wanted to see the locations where Harry Styles will be playing. Well, I actually did take a quick look and it's mostly Europe this summer. And while I'm European and while I plan to go to Europe, I don't yeah. think I can swing a little visit to Portugal just to go see Harry Styles. So um, what if there was a way for me to still experience being 
there uh, and, and seeing um, Harry Styles live from California, where I'm at now. So I can imagine the world of like a hybrid kind of concert where the actual thing is going to happen, but people are going to have like huge 360 cameras so that people that are on Spotify can put on a headset and they can feel like they're right there next to Harry Styles, listening to the music, being able to interact through the platform in some manner. So this hybrid kind of live um, virtual attendance could be something really interesting. And in all honesty, it can be very profitable as well because it will be extra tickets. I'd, I'd be more than happy to pay for that. Obviously, I wouldn't pay like a thousand, um, but it's still a new vertical that's super low cost for um, the artists yep. and, yep. The, and the location. So this... No, really, I love that. I think it's a very, very valid point. You're again harping on the same point, which is like, yes, there are complementary verticals beyond just concert ticketing mm -hmm. and it can go even deeper into the vertical integration of the entire connection and the experience with the artist. I think if if I have to do the brainstorming here, I think that's happening. It'll happen because if you're selling tickets, what's stopping you from providing the experience to the fans already on your platform? Maybe even before the virtual immersive experience, the first version could be live shows. Uh, you buy a ticket of uh, for a physical event and maybe you also buy, I mean, of course, you can also buy it for a for a, for a live show, which you can watch it on Spotify, just like as how we would do on YouTube. But because you are on Spotify with high intent, you're a fan with the artist. I think that's a very interesting topic. I mean, I love that. I think that's where they'd be going. I think yeah. adding more complementary verticals, aligning on the one common point, which is connection between the fans and the artist. Love it. And I need to, to say this for our audience. We have not scripted this. Me and my young kind of um, brainstorm on different topics, but then we kind of wing it. And this is the fun of this yeah. because we're both product nerds and we want to brainstorm and we want to come up with super cool ideas like this. So if you're listening to this, please let us know what you think of our idea. Just comment on the video on YouTube or um, we're obviously on a podcast on Spotify and Amazon and so on. So yeah, reach out to us for, for any comments. But my young, if you close your eyes and you can think about this new future, what yeah. would you imagine Spotify to look like in, let's say, three years? It's a very good question. I think you give me some good insights on how you know it can emerge. L let me package it into some sort of uh, framework for, for all of us. I think it's a very classic evolution of companies. They keep changing the frame of reference as they grow. Uh, you know, if you think of Uber, they were first a ride-hitting company, uh, riders and drivers connecting, then they became a transportation company. So your your scope increases. Uh, think about YouTube with video, now it does everything, right? So if I think of Spotify, I think it'll emerge, it'll move out of, it's already moving out of that music app to an entertainment app. Mm -hmm. So I'll repeat that again. It's a, emerging out of that music app and emerging towards a, an entertainment app. Now, what does it mean? Think of it as a super app for entertainment, which has everything with one strong, common strength, connection between artist and fans. Leveraging that, they can build an entire ecosystem of entertainment. Uh, so starting with music, they went to podcast. From podcast, they came video. From video, now they're going into ticketing. We are imagining they'll go into live music shows, virtual immersive music shows, we don't know. They might also go into audio sports, which could be back. We used to listen to audio sports on, you know, on our uh, radios long, long back before us, right? Uh, it can go back to that. If we can have new video shows coming in, live uh, sports streaming coming in. My point is, uh, they'll emerge into an entertainment app by bringing in new creators, new fan bases. Yep. So moving away from music to sports to other forms of entertainment that's what the new version of Spotify would be. And that's how they will increase the number of users and new ways to, to monetize mm -hmm. that's beyond their current advertising and current subscription model. That's my version of uh, the future of Spotify. This reminds me of the episode we did where we talked about Netflix games. I think it's kind yeah. of a very similar model, right? They're expanding in different ways and they're testing out the waters for something else that makes sense. But if you thought about it before they did it, you wouldn't immediately think about it. So it's, it's very interesting from a product perspective. All right. Well, this sounds um, really cool. I'm actually going to check out uh, this, this ticket booking feature right after we wrap this up. So 
to summarize, um, thank you all for joining today. We talked about Spotify and a new feature that was announced where you can actually discover and you can purchase tickets for gigs and concerts of bands that you personally would be very, very interested in. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank See you, you next time. Bye.